Hi. Oh, hello. <laughs> Are we really? I'm Paul Wontorek. <laughs> I'm Beth Stevens. Welcome. We have a fantastic guest today. Oh my God. Who's here, Beth? Karen Mason. Who's starring in Love, Love Never, Never Dies. Di you guys, Love Never Dies is finally here in the U.S. It's all happening. Dreams come true. I love this show. I'm excited she's here. I love her. Madam Jerry, it's going to be a good talk. Uh, <laughs> and, and a lot of news. A lot of news. Lo you, so let's, okay, so you have to talk about the big news that happened. It broke at midnight. <laughs> it was so exciting. It broke. It broke. Uh, so we all knew that Pretty Woman was becoming a musical. Yes. And that Jerry Mitchell was hard at work on it. And in fact, there is a workshop happening right now. I, they're probably singing something about prostitutes in LA right now mm -hmm. and I'm falling in love word. and all that <laughs> um, and anyway they announced the cast so now we know who's actually playing the parts that were made famous by of course Julia Roberts and Richard Gere you remember when this movie came out it was a big deal 1990 iconic iconic made Julia Roberts a star um, anyway so here we go Samantha Barks you Very guys exciting. everyone has been waiting for Samantha Barks who of course is in the Les Miserables movie playing Eponine people have been waiting for her to come to Broadway and now she's coming to Broadway we saw her in the West End we saw you saw her at the Donmar. All oh right, was that the West End? Not really. Eh, off West End, <laughs> for, I don't know. Anyway, we saw her there. Uh, she's fantastic. I saw her in Amelie, too. She did Amelie out of town. Um, anyway, she is playing Vivian Ward, the prostitute with the heart of gold, who we all love. <laughs> and playing uh, Ed Edward Lewis is Steve Kazee, Tony Award winner Steve Kazee, who, of course, was in Once uh, on Broadway. Won a Tony Award, I believe, five years ago. 2012. Seven years? Five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Anyway, he's back, and it's very exciting, and they're going to be adorable together. And they also announced that this musical is coming to Broadway in the fall of 2018. Next year. And first, it will play Chicago's Oriental Theater, which is a beautiful theater, starting March 13th. And, of course, Jerry Mitchell's directing and choreographing. They announced the whole creative team. David Rockwell's doing the sets. Greg Barnes. So it'll be fabulous. Beth knows very well. She's done a lot of videos with Greg Barnes. I have. He's doing the costumes. Uh, anyway, it's, it's an amazing group of people. It's a big Broadway musical. It's going to play a Niederlander theater to be announced. Brian and, Adams. Huh? Brian Adams. Oh, yeah, we know that. Yeah, and Brian Adams wrote the score, of Which course. we already knew. Sorry. Yes, thanks Sorry. for reminding us. Brian Adams is, is writing the score with his, like, longtime writing partner. So... Anyway, it's a big deal. It's a big Broadway it's musical. It's a big deal. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, I have news about Harry Potter. I feel like I need to say it like that. You Harry, don't. All right, Harry Potter uh, is has its first performance date. So oh. that's exciting. That's so that, new? That's okay. new. At March 16th, so mark okay. your calendar, March 16th at the Lyric Theater opening night, which was previously announced, is still April 22nd. Right. And the seven original West End cast members will be in it, as we know, directed by Ben Tiffany. Yeah. We saw that. Another big show. And we went bananas. Big it's show. And so the cast good. is phenomenal. So good. Um, so good speed musicals, I believe. It's not good speed opera house. Isn't it good speed musicals? I anyway, so. uh, they announced their new season. They are doing the Will Rogers Follies, which is a fantastic musical that I love. Um, next April, and it's directed by Don Stevenson, very talented actor as well. And it's starring David Lufkin, who apparently was in the original Broadway Company. He was a pla replacement, replacement mm -hmm. in the original Broadway Company, and I assume that he's playing Will Rogers. He's Will playing Will Rogers. Rogers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, never Met a Man, uh, what's it called? Never Met a Man I Didn't, I didn't, I didn't Like. like. Yes, I didn't that like. is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, and then Rob Ruggiero, who is right now directing Rags at Good Speed, which I'm very excited about, is going to do Oliver next summer. And then Gordon As Greenberg. Director. Huh? He's not going to be Oliver. He's going to be the He's director. He's directing it. That's what I said. <laughs> it's been clear. And then Gordon Greenberg is uh, directing Bullets Over Broadway next September. So that's what's happening at Good Speed. Cool. Do you want me to talk about Eden Espinosa? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Merrily We Roll Along, which is... At the Huntington and outside Boston. I was going to say a fantastic show. Also a fantastic, fantastic show, show. It's happening love. right now. Eden Espinosa is in it playing Mary Flynn. Poor, sad Mary Flynn, who we all love. And oh she sings... God. I mean, come on. Come on. She has some Flynn. issues. She has, she has I mean, issues. she has to wear a fat suit. It's the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Drunk anyway, scene. so the big song is Now You Know, which is my number four favorite Stephen Sondheim song. I Out of how many did you rank? A hundred? I ranked 85, I think. Wow. For That's, high That's high up. That's high up. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I, I, I ranked it number four. I love that song. Anyway, you can watch video of it on the site. Uh, so, But and I need to see it live, too. Yes, so it's playing at Huntington through October 15th. So hurry up. Hurry what up. else is on the site, Beth? Well, I have to say Christy Altamar. You have to Anastasia say Christy Altamar. Anastasia Star is such a fantastic vlogger. And she puts her heart and soul into it. She puts her heart it. and soul into it. And John Bolton, 
and Derek Plena are having a death match backstage, and this time it's about baking. There's a bake off. Oh. So there's baking happening backstage at Anastasia. Very so check food, out the food vlog. network. Very food network. And she literally goes to their kitchens. She, it's good. Go, so watch that. Okay. Um, John Leguizamo, we have a hot. You saw him today. I love Johnny Legs. I love you Johnny love saying Legs. Johnny Legs. I do love saying Johnny Legs. Saying that. I do, and I've said it to his face. I love John Leguizamo. This is a great show. Did you say it to his face? Of course. Does he like that nickname? He always perks up. He, I got it from him. He says it in his shows. Do you know that he, there's a graphic novel about his life? That he did. He did like yeah. A I have it at yes, home. I, I love that. it. I, I actually want. That. I want to have him autograph it. It's really beautiful. So maybe you can go to the stage door at Latin History for Morons which he's gearing up to do at Studio 54. So right. I talked to him today, but we also have a picture of him with his uh, poster. Posing with his poster, as really you do. Cute. As you do. That's what you do when you're an actor, you pose with your poster. Especially if it's a solo show, because that's no cast members yeah. to, you know what I yeah. mean. Um, also, welcome back. Oh my God, it's a big night. Billy Porter and Star Sands are returning to Kinky Boots tonight. Welcome back, so welcome boys. Back yes. That's exciting. Yeah. I want to see those two again. Yeah, back Billy, in the boots. Back in the boots. Back in the boots, all, both of them in their boots. Yeah. Yeah, and Stark's a daddy now. There's so much has happened. So much right? has happened, and, and Billy's married and opened like an eyeglass store. So much has happened. Sure. Right. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Harry Mason of Love Never Dies. <laughs> The Phantom of the Opera is back. Love Never Dies, the sequel to Broadway's longest running hit, has landed in America with a hotly anticipated national tour. We caught up with the stars of this new musical, which features some of Andrew Lloyd Webber's luscious songs ever, to find out what's up with The Phantom, Christine, and all of our Phantom friends in Love Never Dies. It's a sequel to The Phantom of the Opera, basically. It happens 10 years later. Uh, and, and here we get to find out what has happened to these um, brilliant characters that everybody loves and, and knows so well um, uh, and see how things um, develop. It's set here in New York City actually in Coney Island. We find Christine, she is a super famous opera diva um, but there are some things going on in her life where perhaps she needs some more money and was offered an amazing opportunity in America which is why she had to leave Europe and come to America. I love how much more in depth we get into the characters and I think that might be a surprise to some people because they're going to see now not just the surface of each character but like what are they really dealing with and that's that was a surprise to me a wonderful surprise we're very blessed with having two stars in this show who are very sexy and great talents and uh, I, I think it's going to be a a really fantastic show for people to to see. It's, it's Angela Lloyd Webber at his best. It's these soaring, beautiful, romantic melodies. I think one of my favorite parts of Phantom of the Opera is when Christine finally ends up kissing the Phantom at the end, and there's the suspense that builds, and then the moment where they kiss, and the music swells, and this whole orchestra's playing angel music, and it's that in this for two hours. You get everything that's great about Angela Lloyd Webber. You get um, wonderful melodies that will stick with you for sure. I know from experience of rehearsing it, but you also get really great little production numbers, which I think is something that in the original you didn't get as much of. Andrew Lloyd Webber's music is spectacular in this, and Glenn Slater's lyrics, they're very meaty and wonderful, and uh, I, I see great things for Love Never Dies. Like The Phantom of the Opera, Love Never Dies is set to take audiences on a wild theatrical ride with dazzling visuals. This time inspired by... The mask of makeup, just to talk, not to spur, man to man, to queen on a par, standing We are back on Live at Five, and I am joined by Karen Mason. Hey! Hello, Karen thank Mason. You, thank you, thank you. Now, you were here not like earlier in the year, I feel like you yes. came by Live at Five. Right. Listen, and I love your new set. It's all new. It's beautiful. We spruced it up for you. Well. <laughs> so, so since you were last year, that happened, and you joined the cast of like one of my favorite shows. I you, love that you already know I, the entire history I, of this show. I actually, too. I love to talk to the rest of the staff. I love to give them little teasers <laughs> about the plot of Love Never Dies and how it all ties together with Phantom of the Opera because it's really uh, a really interesting, cool show. Oh, I think it's really, yeah. really clever. 
and really cool. And I love that you love the score as much as I do. Yeah, it's I saw, beautiful. I, I saw you talking about the score, and it, I really think it's like top, top, you know, top yeah. tier Andrew Lloyd Webber. I mean, this is a, a really beautiful score. It's magnificent, and you know, I've we've been rehearsing for five, six weeks, and yeah. then doing two weeks of tech. And I don't tire of hearing it. It really is quite, it's magnificent. It yeah. really is beautiful. It's exactly what Andrew Lloyd Webber does like amazingly. Yeah. These, these, these grand, romantic, lush scores. Like, it's it's yeah. right there. And what's great about Love Never Dies is it has a little bit of everything. It's a thriller. It's mm -hmm. got mystery. It's got way over the top. And yet, you know, heart. Romance. 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 A lot of romance. A cute kid. Yeah. I mean, f the only thing we're missing is a dog. <laughs> 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 and I don't recommend that they bring a dog on the set. <laughs> okay, so you are the, the iconic Madame Jerry. Now, we, we, <laughs> we know her from Phantom of the Opera. Right. Uh, is this a character you have, have you ever gone in to play this role? Or? I went in to audition you to did? play the role. For, on, yeah. in, in Phantom? Right, on Broadway okay, as a okay. replacement. But um, I, uh, it's too high for me. <laughs> it's too high in Phantom? Yeah, she sings really high in <laughs> Phantom. And so I uh, I did not get, I was really not taken very seriously for the role. <laughs> Although I went in, I dressed up and went in. But Wait, uh, dressed up how? Did you like do I, that? Well, no, you know, I've always said that when, you know, there were all my friends lined up on the side uh -huh. at uh, the audition, and it looked like an Italian funeral because everyone <laughs> is in, you know, black, pulled back hair. <laughs> it's so amazing. It, w it really was quite fascinating. <laughs> and I knew everybody there. So, you know, we were all spending a lot of time catching up and just right. enjoying it. But I knew the second I went in there that I was really wrong for it. But I still went in anyway. And look at now you get to do the, the part two of her story. That's right. Madame Jerry's voice has dropped. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now she's in the States running a, a show in Coney Island. She is. And so what's really cool about this show is it's so, when I, was, when I first saw it in London, I saw it a couple times in London, and I saw the Australian production, which mm -hmm. I know is the production that you are doing, the Simon Phillips production. Right. He directed uh, Priscilla on Broadway as well. Um, w it's so cool to see characters you know and love, like, continued. And I, right. and I love that yeah. there are so many of the characters in it because it's really fascinating, and it's such a, a unique experience to get to see characters from a musical you love years later right. and to really think about sort of, like, the how many years later is it? Ten years. Ten years later. And, like, a lot, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, the Phantom of the Opera was really set up for a sequel because you don't know what happens to right. everybody. And nobody, you know, it's all kind of laid out. Mm -hmm. And then to see how it just goes a complete different way. Yeah. It's the the relationships are deeper, more complicated, and uh, it's it's really an amazing show. It really is. So as you said, um, so the Phantom opened this this place in Coney Island. What's it called? The uh, Mr. Wise Phantasma. Right. Okay. Spelled with a PH. Okay. By the way. Of course. Just like <laughs> I just like I spell fan with a PH <laughs> when I'm referring to myself. Um, and so. Uh, Madam Jerry's in a very similar, she's kind of running, and, and Meg is there. Meg is there, Meg Jerry's and, there. and she's, Madam Jerry is running the place right. for the Phantom. She helped him escape, mm -hmm. and now, you know, has kept him going, mm -hmm. and uh, she's the kind of the queen of the entire place. Right, and so basically Christine is now a big opera star mm -hmm. in Europe. Far, and, far away. And she gets invited to sing. At the place, she doesn't know who who runs it. She doesn't know who runs the joint. It's the Phantom. You find that out right in the beginning. And uh, <laughs> she shows up with Raoul and and a little boy. And a little boy. And and you know, and then all kinds of things happen. Ooh, yeah. All kinds of things. Oh happen. yeah. It's fun. I mean, it's really fun to sort of watch Mischief it. Mischief ensues. Yes, yes, yeah. and and that score. Wow. Yeah, it is. And the relationship you see the relationship between Meg and Madame Giry. Meg has become the star yeah. of this. But and Christine arrives. Christine arrives <laughs> and kind of throws a wrench in everything. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, Madame Giry is very aware of the potential of things going awry. Uh -huh. uh, and then she learns the information about the kid and 
it's all very exciting. You must come to yes, find out. Everyone must. Uh, yeah. And Ma so, how, how about getting into the Madame Jerry head? I mean, she is she a villain? Who? I no, mean, what, how do you think of her? I mean, even when you watch Phantom, the whole time you're like, I'm trying to figure this woman out. Yeah. Well, she's she's I the let's see. How do I say this gently about people in ballet? <laughs> they're, you know, they're used to very stiff structures uh -huh. in ballet. And so she is very much about this is the way it's mm -hmm. done. Right. And um, she is very protective of the phantom and very protective of her turf. Yeah. Uh, I think you see, you get to see a little bit more of how protective she is and the lengths to which she will go mm -hmm. to protect her turf mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this. So that you get to investigate Madame Jury. I don't think she's a villain. I think she's a woman who's a businesswoman and trying to protect what she has. Right. You know, she sees that this is what I have to do to get what I need to protect my family. Yeah. And and she is not one to shy away from doing it. I also think it's interesting that Meg and Madame Jerry, both in this show, you kind of see the, um, it's the early 1900s, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of see like sort of the immigrant experience with them, right? About Absolutely. coming to New York and sort of figuring that out. It's interesting. And what they had to do. I mean, it's interesting about Coney Island, too, I, is that Coney Island was really a repository for people who couldn't fit in mm -hmm. right. anywhere else. Right. And, and yet people found a place there. Mm -hmm. And it's... You know, the immigrants who couldn't quite fit in yep. anywhere else yeah. fit in on Coney Island would find a place for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so there's all of that going on. Yep. I, I think what Simon was so brilliant, is so brilliant at, is making, is giving you the chance to see what all of that is. That it's not all the cotton candy yep. and the rides mm -hmm. and the fun and the thrills. There's really a dark... Yep part to this you know it's kind of Atlantic City mm -hmm. with the really dark yeah. structures and the dark people in, in you know creating lives for themselves well I don't know about you Karen Mason but I get all my history from Broadway musicals <laughs> that's, that's how I learn about things well so. sure yeah <laughs> there's actually a lot to learn from Love Never Dies <laughs> so let's talk about the physical production because I was sort of I was really wowed by it when I, I haven't seen it live yet but when I oh, saw the, love the taped version of it from Australia, it's a beautiful production. I yeah. mean, what, what is it like sort of living in it? Well, you know, technically it's very complicated. So we had two weeks in Utica, New York. Right, doing so you rehearsed in New York, it. and then you went to this theater in upstate New York. The beautiful Stanley Theater in okay. Utica, New York. And you York. teched it, and then you teched did a few performances. Right, okay. three previews. Okay. And, you know, things there were technical things that kind of happened that slowed it down a uh -huh. little bit but it's so dense technically yeah. that um, that's to be expected and the Utica audiences loved seeing that happen not that they wished it for us but mm -hmm. you know they they were along for the ride um, technically there it, it, it's really great for Madame Jury, because basically she's not in all of the technically right. dense things. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so that's really easy. You know, <laughs> I show up, do a do a few songs, and then boom, I'm gone. But it's uh, it's beautiful to watch, and um, it's going to be a little different than the Australian version okay. because they had so many different. They had a much bigger uh, area, and also we have to make it. Capable of touring. Yeah, you're touring around the country. Right. And so th this is complicated. I think people are going to be astounded by how many moving parts mm -hmm. there are to mm -hmm. this. The story is still magnificent within that. Yeah. So you start next week in Baltimore. Yeah. And I will be there. Yay! Cheering you on. And then you open in Detroit. That's yes. like the official opening. And then look at this. You, you have all these. You're going all over the country. I know. I've You're got new luggage and everything. Now, so have I'm you ready. done the, the touring thing? <gasps> I have not. So I, I, see, I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything that you toured in. I, you know, the Wonderland was a little bit. Christmas okay. Story was four months. Right. But nothing this is a, of this. This is a big. Yeah. This is a 
big Are, are there any tour. cities you're excited to, to hit on the road? Well, I'm looking forward to Chicago because it's my yeah. home. Oh, right. I know. Actually, go Chicago. David said hello from your hometown of Chicago. Hi, well, David. And hi back, David. <laughs> David also said, can you please describe Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber in three words? I've never met him. No, that's <laughs> never not Never met him. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did meet him on the uh, opening night of Sunset Boulevard, actually. So oh. I have a history with him, uh, but that was the extent of my... Yeah, you were in that. I was. Yeah, yeah. I was, so they tell me. Yeah, you were fantastic. Well, thank you. Um, so are you excited to meet him? I mean, he's going to come check out Love Never Dies. Well, you've met him already, but I mean... Yeah, his, but, but no, I'm excited for him to see this because... He did. He didn't. I'm not sure he actually saw my performance in Sunset right. Boulevard. Right. I'm sure he'd heard about it. I, I, I'm sure he was told. Yeah. yeah. That you know, there's nothing to worry about, and or he was told, please worry a lot. Oh, <laughs> I, who knows? <laughs> but I, I'm very excited for him to see this because I, I. This is a very special company, hmm. and a very. Uh, uh, there's such. I, I think he'll be v relieved and honored. Not honored. I think he'll be relieved and happy that everybody in his company is so happy to be part of it. Uh huh. Um, uh, Elise asked a question I wanted to ask. What's your favorite song in the show? Is there like a certain? I mean, I'm sure that changes over time. But like, is there something that sort of? There's a song that uh, Mary Michael Patterson and yeah. I were talking. Who plays Meg? Yes. We're talking about this the other day. There's She's a, a former Christine on Broadway. Yes, right? cool. I know. She yeah, did it for fun. like two and a half years, I think. Yeah. I'm perhaps one of the few in the company who has not done Phantom, but right. I did you audition auditioned. for. Yeah, that was good enough for me. <laughs> 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 Auditioned and turned down. <laughs> Um, there's a song, and uh, I don't know the name of the song. I'm so bad at that. Uh, is there's a song that Christine and the Phantom sing as the as her dressing room turns and they're singing it on Under a balcony. A night? Mm, that no, could no, be uh, that, whole, the, that whole thing when he first appeared. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I mean, there's like eight minutes of like amazing music, right? Right. In that that in whole that, section is stunning. Yeah. 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 And that's when you find out all this stuff. You find out all this stuff about what happened after Phantom. I know, isn't that interesting? Oh my God! I yes. know, a lot I'm of like information you guys. You have right no there. Idea. <laughs> like not faking it. Well, and luckily <laughs> we show. have. I mean, Gardar Tor Cortez is fantastic. Yeah, as and he is did Megan the show Pacerno. in Europe, or he did it somewhere in he Hamburg. Did, in Hamburg, right? Yeah. Right. And um, and Megan as Christine. Uh -huh. Really fantastic people, and yeah. Sean Thompson as Raúl. Yep. Uh, all bring a you know a, a, a beautiful insight and warmth and love to their characters, mm -hmm. which is you know it's pretty good. I think and you're all gonna love it. I think you all are gonna really love it. I'm show. excited for America to discover this show. A lot of people still don't really know there's a Phantom sequel, and so I'm excited you know to get out on the road and all these cities are gonna. Yeah, and that this is you know this is not the London production. Right. Yeah. It's it was you know. Rethought through yeah. by by Simon Phillips, yeah. and um, I think he's, you know, it's it's got a little bit for everyone. And if that one scene, you know, eight what is it, eight to ten minutes of all that, of the you know yeah. the beautiful singing, yeah, it, you know, wait two seconds and there'll be a huge uh, company number mm -hmm. with a lot right. going on, right. It's not just romance. It's not just romance. Yeah. It's thrill. It's it's you know carnival. It's a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, Bell of Tombstone. Yeah. Fans of Bell of Tombstone. You were fabulous. And what's Bell of Tombstone? Oh, thank you. It was a presentation of a musical written by uh, Sheila Ray and um, Michelle Browerman. Uh -huh. And I did. Oh, and there was a gentleman who wrote the book. And forgive me for not remembering. Um, I didn't think that was going to come up. I oh, I'm sorry. Man, it was that like, you know, right. delete. As soon as it was over, delete. The Joe? It was, uh, Joe Barros was yeah. the director. Okay, okay. And uh, it was so much fun to do. I, you know, it was, uh, Heather McRae and myself played the oh. leads. Oh, fun. Yeah, we did it down at the Jewish Museum on uh, oh, downtown. Cool. What's a dream role of yours? Do you have one? Michael wants to know. Yeah, actually, I would love to before I'm... 
dead playing Mame. I'd love oh, to yeah, do yeah. Mame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned this last time. Yeah. I love this idea. I'd love to do Mame. Yeah. I'd also love to do a play. Yeah. I'd love to do something that is non-musical. Right. I'd to see how that mm -hmm. is different. Yeah, flex those muscles. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've never had a chance to do that, and well, I think I'm ready to Corey know. actually saw the show on Sunday afternoon and said it was wonderful, so congratulations. Good, thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thank What's you. the most challenging part about this role? Um, I think it will be maintaining a reality for Madame Giry. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, uh, I there are many operatic, over-the-top moments. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Andrew Lloyd Webber is really good at those yep. really over the top things, and I think it will be making maintaining Madame Giry as a, as a real person, uh -huh. you know, because right. I like her. I yeah. like her as I like her stamina. I like her her um, yep. determination, but I don't want her to become cartoon, you know. Right. And that would yeah. be really easy because she is. Mm -hmm. This close. <laughs> dramatic. She, but she's she's dramatic. very dramatic. Uh, so how did you figure out what you're packing on the road? Did you figure out what? How much <laughs> stuff do you bring? I've already packed way too much, <laughs> and and you know I've only been in one town, and I've already packed <laughs> way too much. But uh, I'm learning what I don't need, and that that's probably the best part about mm -hmm. you know traveling is is learning how to edit yeah. down, yeah, so that you don't have to bring. 14 pairs of jeans because <laughs> you're not going to use them, you know, or 12 pairs of shoes because basically you're going to wear the ones that you wear to the theater and then home. Right, right. Look at this schedule. It's crazy. I know. It is crazy. You're going to and Vegas. You're going to L.A. You're going to Buffalo. You're going to Minneapolis. You're going to Houston. They're going everywhere. You're We're going to be in Cleveland. Cleveland. Rock and Roll City. Rock and Roll. For two I weeks, it. I think. I'm, I'm excited Cleveland. for you. I think this is a, a Thanks, great role. Paul. I'm excited to see you do it. So, Thank you. Uh, and everyone needs to see Love Never Dies. It's uh, on a big national tour. You can find all the dates online. And Karen Mason is Madame Giri. Yes. I can't wait to see it. Thank I you. I can't wait to see the hair, the, the whole yeah. thing, the get up, <laughs> the whole thing. It's going to be good. Uh, and so, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock with another amazing guest. Have fun on the road. Bye.